in the Bible, the Good Samaritan sees a stranger in great need and restores him. In my life, Mo Brooker will always be the Good Samaritan. I am grateful to you beyond words. You gave me the confidence that I could take the path to have a creative life. And my life has been forever changed by meeting you years ago. Thank you. Listen, you, you are welcome. I remember when you walked into the studio down at UNC. In 1974, I had just graduated from UNC and was slowly recovering from a mental breakdown. I was trying to make art as a form of self-therapy and went back to the university's art building to seek some free advice. I approached an imposing looking man and asked him if he was an art teacher. Yes, Mo Brooker replied, just hired. Though I was no longer a student, Mo began mentoring me. His kindness and encouragement helped mend my broken spirit, and his recommendation of the Pennsylvania Academy set the course for my life. Since 2013, I've been making movies about Mo's art and life. He was very wise. I want to share just a few of the things he said that have had a great impact on me. We're getting away from community. I mean, communities are really important. One of the few communities that still exists is in the creative world. A student said to me, what's your secret? I said, I don't have any secrets. I'll give you whatever I have. I'll give it all to you because it's not all mine. I got some of it from somebody else and mixed it with what I have, and it came out me. I'm going to give you what I have. You take it and you mix it with what you have, and then you do it. Human experience is what art is about, and it's been that way all the way back to the cave drawings. The human condition drives art, and if it's not there, then the art is dead. Art is meant to reach into people. It's meant to reach into each one of us. I know the satisfaction that happens in me when the work reaches out to a person and they understand what I'm talking about. I cannot imagine not having music in the world. I will hear something and it causes colors to come to mind. Line is melody. Music has always been a part of my family life. My sister had a gospel choir. We would sing duets and solos together. My brother was a jazz musician. My niece, she has one of the most incredible voices you ever want to hear. My parents both sang. My father taught himself how to play the piano. Everyone had a voice. Music is a center for us. I was a realistic painter for a long time. When I was in Korea, I saw a Korean funeral, which struck me. Now, you have to understand this, because my dad was a pastor of a church. I've had my round of funerals, and everyone's wearing black. This funeral the cart that carried the body was multicolored, blazing. Well, that's when I began to move away from realistic work and I moved toward color. And I studied what colors they used. There seems to be a sense that something wonderful is going to happen relative to death, as opposed to something not so wonderful in the West. People say, are you afraid to die? I say, no. There's something there that I want to find out about. I want to see what it's like. So I really don't have a fear of death at all. Not at all.
You've gone through some pretty hard things. Your wife just died. Yes. How do you cope? I did everything I could for my wife. I gave all that I had. When she had to retire from the art museum, I resigned for more to him I couldn't do it anymore. And so I made sure that she got to see things and go places so that she didn't feel as if she was set aside. We went everywhere. If you do the things that you're supposed to do, yes, it is difficult and hard for you, but you don't have any regrets about what you didn't do. So for me, that's the important thing. I gave and gave and gave and gave until she was no longer around. And she died very peacefully. I met your son Mousse when he was three, and now he is this amazing animator and USC professor. But I have yet to meet your daughter. Can you tell me about her? Misha. Oh my. Went to Spelman, bright kid. Lives in Brooklyn and loves it. When my wife passed, she came back to Philadelphia, took leave from her work, came and stayed here for about a month. And before that, she had come when I had the heart attack. She came and took care of her father. My son came as well. They both treat me royally. I don't deserve the kids that I have. They're special, special, special kids. A lot of what I want to do has a great deal to do with joy. You may say, well, what in the hell is he talking about? One of the things that my grandmother said to me years ago, I said, I hear older people talking about joy. What, is, what does it really mean? I said, does it mean happiness? She said, no. She said, it has nothing to do with happiness. It has to do with an understanding, a way down deep knowing of who you are, how you work in this universe, and that there isn't anything that you can't overcome. And she said, I got that from my parents who had been slaves. And if you don't defeat the person's sense of self, then that deep down knowing allows a person to move through. So I'm not interested in religion as such. I'm interested in the spiritual issue which is available to every human being. And that's how you found your joy? That's how you find the joy. It's not happiness. It's an understanding. You know things. You realize things. Nothing can defeat you unless you let it. And that knowing is the joy, not happiness. That knowing is the joy that you cannot be defeated. You can overcome anything that's put in front of you. Anything is put in front of you, you can overcome. I have enormous belief in the human spirit and in people. Regardless of what the world is like right now, I want to make people smile, I want to make people laugh, and I want to introduce to people their own sense of spirituality, because that's what keeps us going, that's what keeps me making art. The substance of things hoped for. Do you know how powerful a hope is? A hope is unbelievably powerful. Hope gives you courage. Thank you, Mo.